We all, we're all dreamers, uh, sometimes more real than others, but we're all dreamers, and we all dream about different, different things. This, this whole thing is a dream. In 1994, um, I was finishing this house, uh, and my plans were to retire here. Um, I, my business uh, took me all over the world. Uh, my work with my daughters. I was mom and dad. I have two daughters. Uh, one of my daughters uh, got married. The other one was off at UC Davis. Um, I was tired of traveling. I knew that my uh, life was in for a change. Go farther up, uh, it becomes more and more poverty. Right now we're going up to really the poor part of, uh, of the Comunes. Comunes is kind of like a little pueblo, a little village. And this is where uh, uh, a lot of the displaced and real poverty happens and they live up in this area. But you'll see some places as we go farther up where there is no water, there is no uh, sewage, there is no services. The streets are very, very bad. Uh, the people come and they start building their little place. We have a, uh, a farm and uh, what we're doing is uh, a dining room for the kids. Uh, the kids are really the most important and secondly importantly are the elderly but the families. The idea is to have the families come to this place. Uh, no arms are allowed. Once they come in it's a place of peace. It's all outdoor. And this is what we have. We have space. And eventually, what we want to do is just be able to be more uh, accommodating for all of these events. There's kids here that are in this table that have been uh, in trouble with the law. Uh, they've been in, in drugs, uh, but they come here and they, they feel they feel uh, the, the possibilities. So they, they can dream a little. There's a young man here that uh, suffers epilepsy and he just had a seizure and the, the men just picked him up and we'll see him, he's probably in very bad shape. It's, it's for me, it's, it's, uh, I, I love it, I love it. I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm amazed uh, that God really has found use for me and has allowed me to work for him. I had met a priest who suggested that I meet a bishop in the U.S. Uh, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Archbishop Robert Carlson from St. Louis, co-founder. And I had all my plans made. I was going to move here, live here six months, and six months in my house in California. And uh, I was telling Bishop, I met him, very gracious, and I was telling him all about my plans. And he looked at me and he said, I don't think you should do what you're planning. You should come and help me. Help you? Sioux Falls? What's in Sioux Falls? No beaches, no mountains. And I looked at him and I said, but Bishop, I have everything planned. Uh, Bishop uh, sat down with us, very gracious. And he looked at me and he said, you may have doubts, but I don't. You should go into the seminary. Seminary? Are you kidding, Bishop? None of it made any sense, but in prayer, okay, Lord, if, if that's what you want, they're going to have to accept me in the seminary. Um, I asked Bishop, Bishop, what do I do? I, have a, I just finished my dream house in Columbia. I have a house in California, a house in Colorado. I have my business. I have 
commitments, sell and give away everything. And uh, except Colombia, Colombia has something special for you. He had never been here. Had, didn't know anything about Colombia except that I had built this house. Meanwhile, this house, uh, I realized after I was ordained, you're not going to get a chance to go very, very often to your dream house. So we started thinking about what are we going to do with this. So he said, well, you know, let me pray about it. And we, we should pray about what we do with that house. In the morning, he said, you know, I, in prayer, it came to me that that house really should be a place of prayer like you planned when you built it and go back to Colombia. Colombia has something special for you. In July, I got permission and I came in July uh, 2005. And so when I came to Colombia, my idea was uh, be able to take a little time and uh, enjoy this house and see what was going to happen with it and uh, uh, work with the poor and maybe help in some of the parishes. Well, uh, as soon as I got here, uh, a priest uh, invited some young men to come and visit me and they started to ask if they could stay here for a while and accompany me. Uh, we had some retreats and uh, several of them decided to stay. So oh, your brother was killed, right? Yeah, he was killed here in Colombia. Um, yeah, in f he was. Uh, it was uh, August 1918, and he um, he came from his work, uh, and he was playing with sharing with his daughter. She was two years old at that time, and somebody came, uh, asked for, for him. That person wanted to, to uh, uh, steal uh, his house, and, and he, he decided to, to kill him. He, he, um, he gave him seven shots in front of his daughter. Uh, and it was a really difficult moment. He was 25 years old when, when he was killed. And I think for a reason, God uh, uh, invited me to, to come to join the Messengers of Peace. Because it's not easy to forgive. Uh, and I did, and I, I, I feel that I have to work for peace. More than work, to pray for peace in our country. And I think the Messengers of Peace allowed me to, to do that. Uh, when she was uh, little, her mom wanted to kill her. Mm -hmm. uh, Right now she is okay, she's a happy girl, but before she doesn't want uh, to see anybody. She, she was scared and afraid and, and, and shy. How is your name? Blanca. How? Blanca. Your name is Blanca. And this is uh, called Regina Pachis, Queen of Peace. And this is the home of Talita Kum, and it's a home for girls. Uh, sexually abused, physically abused, uh, or in uh, situations where they shouldn't be. And this is where they live. And this is one of my little sweeties. Hi, mija. Que hay? Que hay, que hay? Que hay? This is one of the little girls that was abused. <laughs> David.
David, por ser bueno, amiga. Gracias, gracias. But to follow it, really, I wish uh, that I had millions and millions so I could really help a lot of people, kids that are starving, elderly people that don't have anything, um, single mothers that uh, uh, work three, four jobs uh, supporting a, a, a child, uh, sick people that uh, don't have anybody to wash them or bathe them. Uh, if I had, if I had a lot of money, boy, what what I would do? We're all dreamers. <laughs>